How's it going everyone? It's Sam. Today I want to show you some of the best investors of our time and what they say to do when there is market volatility, market crashes, why you can actually get really large returns in the long term when people misunderstand whatever you're buying and what you have to look out for. Now I'll put timestamps underneath the video, but I would highly suggest staying through to the end because each of these investors have posted massive, massive returns over the years. There's also a link down there to BlockFi. If you guys don't mind checking that out while you hit the like button and subscribe button, there you can get an interest rate if you're outside the US on your cryptocurrency and you still get up to a $250 bonus while you're in the US. It's also a link down there to Unstoppable Domains to get a readable wallet address. It makes receiving crypto so much easier and you can actually sell these for more money. Now, the crypto market is a little bit red today, right? We were looking actually a little bit better. Bitcoin was around 39.4, just half an hour ago at the time of this recording stocks were up a significant amount now there's some volatility we saw yesterday a lot of stocks and crypto fall really significantly i mean some stocks were down 12 percent like tesla so that's why i want to show you what really good investors say about market volatility because i think that it will be really helpful for your long-term mindset and maybe even bookmark this so that way you can come back to it or hit the like button so you can come back to it you can go find your liked videos but that way you can remind yourself what the best investors have done over time to get really good returns and these are some of the best investors like i've said some that you'll know the names of now, before we move on, I do want to talk about this for just a moment. The Central African Republic is adopting Bitcoin as legal currency. Now, there's some back and forth. I covered this a few days ago. They say adopted as legal tender. This means that they would have to accept Bitcoin as payment if someone were to present it and want to buy something. I've heard some back and forth whether that is actually what it is or whether it's uh, allowing shops to take Bitcoin, but they aren't forced to. So I've seen both. I don't read their language, so I can't go through the document. And it's kind of up in arms right now, or up in the air, uh, what this is. I've seen both. One is that's legal tender, and then one, again, is just regulation so that people can accept it as tender. And they have a population similar to that of El Salvador. It's slightly smaller, maybe about uh, 30% smaller, but their GDP is about the 10th uh, the size of El Salvador, so it's not very significant in that way, but more dominoes are being knocked down, more regulation is good. Either way, it's good for cryptocurrency. Now, first I want to play something by Michael Saylor, the great Michael Saylor. Uh, the reason I play it is because, first of all, I think Michael Saylor is a very forward-thinking investor. He doesn't care what others think. He's willing to set trends, which I think can be something that's very valuable in an investor. They're not just, he's not trying to go invest in the S&P 500. He's not trying to go uh, buy Costco stock. He's trying to buy something that has a really high potential and he's thinking about things in a different way. Even though he's not a fund manager, the fact is he controls a significant amount of wealth, billions of dollars, and he took their stock from $100 back in 2020 all the way up at their peak to about $1,000 a share. So this was a huge return, about a 900% return in just a very short period of time. And he did this by buying something that went up in value significantly. So let's play this by Michael Saylor. If you want to get rich, you're going to have to actually buy something that the majority of the uneducated public doesn't agree with you on and doesn't understand. When you do that, you're going to have to have studied enough so that you have conviction that you're right and not they're right. If you've studied something for a, a thousand hours and they've studied something for one hour and they think it's garbage and you think it's good, then you can reasonably assume that's a chance for you to make a wise investment that will make you money. And this is important right now because we're getting decreased prices for something that won't matter in the long term, right? Are we going to look back 20 years from now and say, man, the Fed raising by a half a point instead of a quarter point, that really screwed up my Bitcoin investment. No, it's not going to matter, right? This is going to be not important in 20 years, but it does affect the price today. Same thing with other stocks as well, right? Let's say Elon Musk buys Twitter and he doesn't sell his shares. Well, the fact is people were scared and it dropped Tesla's price by 12% yesterday. 
because they were worried that he might have to sell some shares. Even if he does, that's a short-term problem. That's not gonna be a long-term problem 10 years from now where, oh, now we can't deliver as many cars because you know 10 years ago, Elon sold $2 billion worth of shares. No, that's not gonna be important. He's saying if you wanna make a significant return, not like you beat the market by 2%, but if you wanna make a significant return on an investment, you have to be investing in something that the general public doesn't understand. Like if you go out on the street and ask people, if they should invest in Apple or the S&P 500 or even Google, right? A lot of people will say yes, right? That's done really well. It's not very controversial and you can outperform the market. Like these stocks have done really well over the last year or two, but you're not gonna get uh, enormous returns from that. If you wanna get a significant return, let's say five or 10% better than the market, you have to invest in something that people don't understand because there's that leverage, right? When people finally start to understand it, well, then the price goes up significantly. If you ask people 20 years ago if they should invest in Amazon stock, they would have said no. It's a dot-com bubble stock. They would say that's it's too risky. It had large price swings. Another stock that a lot of people could look at is Tesla stock. For example, they, a lot of people think are still overvalued significantly. There are bears that have huge, huge uh, uh, bearish convictions and say that it should fall 70, 80%. It's just a car manufacturer. Well, people like Stephen Mark Ryan have been investing for years and this doesn't always pay off right away. Here in this video today, he showed how much he's invested each year. In 2016, he invested $77,000 and he bought 1,800 shares. Well, the next year, he bought 35,000. He was retired in some of these years here and he's still buying a significant amount. So all his free cash flow looks like is going to Tesla stock. Imagine investing 2016, 2017, 2018, 2019, and the price has barely moved at all, right? You've been investing for four years and the price has barely moved. And especially these years here, it's been sideways or down. And then it blows up after that. And you wanna be able to average in when the prices are lower, when people don't understand, because now he's buying significantly more and he's actually buying less shares. Now let's move on to Warren Buffett. I realize not a lot of people like Warren Buffett, but the fact is he's gotten a 20% average return over the last 55 years. So let's play something by him and then we're gonna play something by another investor here. Again, you can skip around if you want. Imagine for a moment that you decided to invest money now and you bought a farm and the farmland around here. Uh, let's say you bought 160 acres and you bought it at X per share or per acre. And the farmer next to you had 160 identical acres, same contour, you know, same, same quality of soil quality. So, it was, it was identical. And that farmer next door to you uh, was a very peculiar character because every day that farmer with the identical farm said, I'll sell you my farm or I'll buy your farm at a certain price, which he would name. Now, that's a very obliging neighbor. I mean, that's gotta be a plus to have a fellow like that with the next farm. Uh, you don't get that with farms. You get it with stocks. You, you own a hundred shares of General Motors and on Monday morning, somebody will buy your hundred shares or sell you another hundred shares at ex exactly the same price. And that goes on you know, five days a week. Uh, uh, but just imagine if you had a farmer doing that when you bought the farm, you looked at what the farm would produce. That was what went through your mind. You were saying to yourself, I'm paying X dollars per acre. I think I'll get so many bushels of corn or soybeans on average. Some years good, some years bad. Some years the price will be good. Some years the price will be bad, etc." But you think about the potential of the farm. And now you get this idiot that uh, buys a farm next to you. And, and on top of that, he's sort of a manic depressive and drinks, maybe smokes a little pot. So his numbers just go all over the place. Uh, now, the only thing you have to do is to remember 
that this guy next door is there to serve you and not to instruct you. You bought the farm because you thought the farm was, uh, had the potential. You don't really need a quote on it. Uh, you know, if you bought in with John D. Rockefeller or Andrew Carnegie, and, um, and uh, there were never any quotes. Well, there were quotes later on, but, but basically uh, you bought into the business and that's what you're doing when you buy stocks. But you get this added advantage that you do have this neighbor who you're not obliged to listen to at all, who is going to give you a price every day and he's going to have his ups and downs and maybe he'll name a selling price that he'll buy at, in which case you sell if you want to, uh, or maybe he'll name a very low price and you'll, you'll buy his farm from him. Uh, but you don't have to, and you don't want to put yourself in a position to where, you, where you have to. So stocks have this enormous inherent advantage of people yelling out prices all the time to you. So he makes a variety of good points there. First of all, you bought what you bought, whether it's crypto or whether it's stocks, based on the fundamentals, hopefully. I know people that don't do that, but you have to buy based on the fundamentals or what you think it will do for you, whether it's seizure resistance or uh, hedge against inflation or cash flows or something like that. You have to invest for some specific reason besides just thinking it's gonna go up, right? And then from there, you have to take advantage of the market, right? Just because someone says, hey, Bitcoin's worth 38,000 today or Tesla's worth $100 less per share today based on some fear, well, that's not necessarily a good reason for you to sell, especially if you're looking at holding it for a couple of years, why would you sell when it's decreased in value now, right? You should use that to your advantage. And if you can buy more, if you wanna buy more, then buy more in that time. Now, let's move on from that to Peter Lynch. Peter Lynch is another great investor of our time. He averaged a 29% over 13 years at Fidelity's Magellan Fund. This took him from 18 million in assets in assets under management to 14 billion. I mean, imagine that, right? If you could start with a million and then turn it into a billion over 13 years. Amazing return. So let's take a look at what he says. So don't get, you know, you have to understand it and say they're doing well and as long as they keep doing well, my best stocks have been my fifth, sixth, seventh year I own them, not my fifth, sixth, seventh day. So you have to understand that and uh, stay with it. You only need to buy a few stocks every decade. When your lifetime's over, you don't need a lot of five baggers to make a lot of money starting with $10,000 or $5,000. You could have bought Walmart 10 years after they went public and made 35 times your money. If you bought it when they went public, you would have made 500 times your money, but you could have waited 10 years after Walmart went public and made uh, 30, over 30 times your money. You could wait three years after Microsoft went public and made 10 times your money. So he says you only need to pick a couple good stocks every decade. You don't have to invest in 100 different stocks that are all 5Xers, right? And sometimes you invest and the price doesn't do anything for a few years. I mean, we just talked about that with Stephen Mark Ryan. Also, you can look at Bitcoin even. Let's say you invested back in this section here where it just went sideways, right? It went, maybe you bought here, it went down significantly, now it went back up. And then went sideways and then it went up and then it went back down and you go this whole time without any change in price or maybe you zoom out even more right you buy at the top well you bought at 13,000 and then went all the way down and sideways for years fact is if you bought in any any period in the last 12 years besides the last year you're up in Bitcoin so the fact is Sometimes it doesn't move for a while, but then it eventually moves. The fact is when we see assets that are at the top of their class, let's say Bitcoin or Google or Tesla, we think oftentimes that they can't move up as much, right? Because they've already gone up so much in the past, but that's just not the case, right? You have to realize that there is future growth and just because you don't see it right now, any asset that's their size, the fact is the fundamentals will continue to get stronger as they execute. So let me know what you guys think about these different investors and their thoughts on market crashes or volatility down below in the comment section. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. And I will see you in the next video. Bye.